welcome. This morning I want to share with you on a subject called resurrection power. <laughs> I know I know this might sound funny, but I want to I want to be so filled with Christ that if a mosquito bites me it'll go away singing this power in the blood. Yeah, I know that's just a joke, but listen, I really mean this. I want I want to be in the place where where the presence of God upon me is so manifest that when something comes against me, it automatically is repelled by the fact that the anointing and the presence of God on me is so strong. And I firmly believe that as we that as we come this come to this weekend, and it's called Passion Week, as we come to this weekend, where where we know Christ was crucified, he was buried. He went into the darkest pits of hell, took the keys of death back, and he held them in his hand. And he was resurrected from that de death. And then he ascended into, I want that resurrection power working within me. Well, I bless you. Thank you for jumping on. Thank you for, for joining. I want to share with you today about five resurrection powers that, that are available for there for you and me. There is no... Christianity. My brothers and sisters, there's no Christianity without the cross. Without the cross and without resurrection. Many, many have the cross, but they don't, they've not come and they've not knelt and they've not asked the Lord into their heart and they've not experienced that resurrection power. It's one thing to acknowledge the cross, but it's a different thing to experience it. And, and we've got to come to know the Lord in his death, his burial. His resurrection and his ascension. It's just not the acknowledgement of it, but we've got to come to know him. And we've got to we've got to live in the power of this resurrection every single day. Not only on Resurrection Sunday, which is coming up, we've got to live in it every day. And it is there for you. So I want to share with you Philippians 3, verse 10 goes like this. My goal is to know him and the power of his resurrection. What is your goal? That's it. That's it. That's it at the end of the day. What is your goal? Well, I do have other goals. I've got a goal. I want to own my house. I have a goal. I want to get land. I've got a goal. I want to get a building so we can have our prophetic training center. I've got a goal. I want to equip the local church where we're in fellowship with Isaiah 58 Ministries. If any of you come to Oklahoma, come through Venita, please come and visit. It's really, really a great place to fellowship. Those are goals I've got in my life. I've got a goal, <laughs> clean the house day. I've got a goal, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. They, these are goals. You've got goals as well. You've got goals to build up your pension, to build up your... But make this your goal, to come to know Christ in the fellowship of his suffering, his burial, his death, his resurrection, his ascension. Come to know him. Desire this. Speak it over yourself. I'm going to create this to be a goal. To, uh, let's have a look at John eleven twenty five. 25. It says, I am the resurrection and the life. And this is it. I believe the Lord wants you to come to know him. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 11 says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives believing in me will never die. You see, the death that it's speaking of is just the laying down of the flesh. But coming to life for eternity is coming to know Christ and the power of this resurrection. When he touched Elijah's bones, the man revived and stood up. My brothers and sisters, that's, we need to see this. This is so, so powerful in 1 Kings 13, 2 Kings, sorry, 13. That prophet had died. He was put into his tomb, into a cave. And then there was a war that took place. And... And this, this, this one soldier had got killed and the enemy was going to attack. So his two friends took him and put his body in the cave, obviously wanting to hide it so that they could cover up their tracks and whatever happened. The minute the body went in there, that body bounced back because it touched the very bones. That's resurrection power. I want that power to be at work within me. Not just that I bounce back and come alive. But I want my bones to have so much power in me that after I've died, after the flesh has, has even fallen off my bones, years later, I want to be in such a place that those bones still hold 
resurrection power within them. Now that is the power we are talking about. Colossians 2.15 says, Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them. My brothers and sisters, this is the heritage of the saints. This is your heritage. This is your inheritance. You only receive an inheritance when someone dies. And Jesus has done that. And there's an inheritance now for you to receive. And it's the inheritance called the power of resurrection. It's yours. Resurrection Sunday is coming up. And you can experience Resurrection Sunday. But my brothers and sisters, don't experience it simply once a year. Experience it every day. Experience it every day. Every day we wake up. This morning was glorious. Woke up this morning, had some breakfast, sat there, and I looked at Karen and I said, let's pray. And we just started thanking God for the day. Thanking Him. Thanking Him. Living in resurrection power. That's what it's about. Jesus, my brothers and sisters, is risen. He is the risen Savior. And He wants you now to rise up. We celebrate and commemorate the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now it's time to celebrate your resurrection. That's right, I've just said it. You have to die for you to be resurrected. And come to know Christ. Come to know Him. Say, Lord God, come and deal with, with me. Come and deal with me. Less of me, Lord God, more of you. Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection was all part of the plan of God for redemption, to redeem you. When Adam gave to Satan, when Adam gave, to Satan through disobedience Jesus took back through obedience oh well when you when you when you fell into sin when you fell into temptation you gave to the enemy legal right but what has happened through the cross is that legal right has been broken off the power, off off the works of off the enemy and he no longer has got a hold all you do is you say, I submit, Lord, come, come and work in my heart. Come and change. Come and do this in my life. And as you do this, you will have resurrection power. God reclaimed the blessing that was stolen in the garden, my brothers and sisters. God reclaimed that blessing. And that blessing belongs to us as his children today. That blessing is yours. What happened when Jesus prayed and he said, Lord God, this is just too much for me. Please, if it be your will, take this cup away from me. And then he prayed again and he said, Lord, have mercy. Forgive me, Lord. I'll take this cup and I'll drink it. He did that for you. He did that for you. And for you, he will come through for you today. I speak this over you. Resurrection power is yours. Satan is defeated, conquered, and he's under the feet of Jesus Christ. Not only is he under the feet of Jesus Christ, but he's under your feet. The word of God says, the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet. Jesus has disarmed every power of Satan. He's disarmed every power of Satan so that you can stand against him and you can resist him and you can overcome every temptation. Most Christians, my brothers and sisters, stop at the cross and they don't take full advantage of all that Jesus has provided for them. But you can. This is for you right now. And I want to share with you these five things, five ways that you can live in resurrection power. Come to know Christ crucified. Say, Lord God, I pray that give me a vision, give me revelation, give me clear understanding. I want to, I want to be the one that's the last person at the cross. I want to be the one there, Lord God. I want to be the one, the first one at the tomb. I want to be the one, Lord God, that's, that was there when on the road to Emmaus that, that you spoke to. I want to be the one, Lord God, that sees you being ascended. I want to be that one. And Father God, I pray that you work this in my life as well. Come to know Christ crucified. Second, activate resurrection power within you. You say, how do I do that? It's all voice activated. Voice activated. You say, how is it voice activated? Speak it. And believe it by by simply saying thought power it's not going to cut it verbalize it speak it out I believe this day resurrection power is at work in me when you make that declaration things around you will change 
Now believe it in your heart, what you've spoken. It's not believing it. It's not speaking it without believing it. Declare it, confess it, and believe it, and you will be saved. That's what it is. Resurrection power doesn't come from heaven. Resurrection power, my brothers and sisters, comes from in you. You say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Resurrection power comes from heaven. My brothers and sisters, resurrection power comes from within you. The Lord has given to you that resurrection power already. He says, choose this day who you will serve. Believe in your heart. You've got to activate this. And you've got to say, I'm going to choose to believe it. And you'll say, Mark, I just don't have, I don't have it. I just don't know how to believe it. Well, this is what you're going to do. Let's do it together right now. Right now. Father God, I ask you to hear my prayer. I know that your ear is not deaf. I know that your arm is not short to save. I know, my brothers and sisters, I know this might be a challenge right now. But speak it and speak to yourself and say, I'm going to believe it. And as you do this, Lord God, I put my hope in Jesus. Father, I thank you that as I believe in the work of the cross, the resurrection power, it is activated within me and I rise up. <clears throat> now believe in this. Believe in this resurrection power of God that's within you. And point four, declare and speak this resurrection power working within you all day. Declare it over yourself. Declare it over yourself. I am healed. I am whole. I am blessed. I am prosperous. The works of my hands prosper. Everything I do is blessed. I have healing as my fragrance. I walk into a room where there's sick people, and by default they get healed when I lay my hands on them. I have healing flowing from me. I am a river of living. Speak resurrection power. Now act on this resurrection power. Point five. Act on it. Act on it. And go out and do it. Go out and do, do it right now. My brothers and sisters, this is how you do it. Worship like you've been raised from the dead. Because this resurrection power is within you. To work through you. To bring change to everything around you. I bless you. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we come to you in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord God, for those watching this. For those who are going to watch later. I pray, Lord God, that resurrection power get activated within them. I thank you, Lord God, that you come and do a miracle this day in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen. Well, I just want to greet you, my friends. Milo, thank you for jumping on Instagram there and for the others who are watching. And my precious family and friends on Facebook. Ronell, bless you. Pam, Nico, Wayne, Yodan, bless you. I just want to say Mornay. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Ong Yang Seyo to you, my brother from South Korea. Sean, I love you guys. Please give your mother a big hug. And I please know I'm praying for you. Precious Amber, we love you and your family. We thank God for you. And there we go, Nasim. I bless you, bless you, bless you. I thank you from Pakistan, Nasim. I'm right. And my precious sister, Sharon Rimbot. I absolutely love you, and Tony. And I've been praying so much for you this weekend. I'm encouraged by you, and God is just so good for how he's kept. And I just want to honor my sister Sharon right now, how he's kept you, how he's kept you faithful, how he's held you in the palm of his hand. And for this purpose, I say this, hear me on this. What God has done in my mom and dad, guys, never stop praying for your sisters, okay? Never stop praying for your, sis, your, your sister, your, your children. <clears throat> never stop praying for your children. What God did for my mother and father, they're still alive today. Mom's 90, dad's well in his 80s, 88, I think. Forget. But what mom, and da what mom and dad did is they prayed for us as their children. They pray every single day for their children. I've got three sisters and myself, the four of us. And, you know, we all went rogue. We all went wild. But mom and dad knew the power of resurrection, the power of resurrection, and they prayed life over us. Today, all my siblings, my three sisters and myself, we are serving the Lord. And we thank the Lord for mom and dad who are faithful in their prayers. Never give up, my brothers and sisters. What looks like it's death, what looks like it's drought, what looks like it's finished, is not finished. The Lord says, I've got resurrection power flowing through you. 
Declare it. Speak it over your family. Speak it over your children. And you will see the turnaround. <clears throat> I love you. I bless you, bless you, bless you. And absolutely right, Amber McCoy. Absolutely precious. Yeah, my wife is golden. She truly is. She's regal. She's outstanding. And she's the most precious woman I know. She's the mother of our family. She's the matriarch. And she prays. So I'm, I'm rejoicing in this fact that resurrection power is at work within us. God bless my precious friends. I love you much. Join with me tomorrow. We're going to go this week. We, we're looking at the passion of Christ. We're looking at resurrection power at work within us. We're looking at the evidence, the fruit, and all of that stuff. And you're going to be blessed. But desire this. Desire this. Desire to come to know Christ. Desire to come to know Christ in the fellowship of his suffering, his death, his burial his resurrection and his ascension and as you purpose to come to know Christ in that way what will happen resurrection power gets activated in you and the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet well I love you love you love you God bless you have a glorious wonderful awesome amazing over-the-top day hey guys jump onto Amazon check my books out in the month of April I was gonna say March in the month of April and March. What do we know? Yes, in the month of April and May, <laughs> I'm checking my calendar. In the month of April and May, we're doing an eight-week intensive prophetic course. There's no charge for this. And um, please contact Karen or myself if you're keen on it. We're going to be using our School of Prophets workbook. It's been fully revised. Check it out on Amazon. If you can't get it through there, contact me, and we'll have one posted to you. Um, but yeah, do check out the other books. Declare a decree most profound 365 declarations for every day of the year how to break family curses how to revoke and reverse curses that have been spoken over you how to pray the prayer of imprecation how to proclaim seven proclamations seven declarations seven decrees and how to live in blessing how to stop the iniquities coming through the bloodline and how to how to build blessing to flow through your bloodline. Get that book. It's really, really good. Especially the little book called Kingdom of God. Where we have a look at true biblical kingdom transfer. You've heard about this. Kingdom transfer. Kingdom transfer. I hear it being preached so often. The wealth of the world is coming to the, to the righteous. My brothers and sisters, that is, that is like a, a leaf on the tree. That is not the big thing. The, the wealth of the world is not the big thing that's coming into the hands of the righteous. Kingdom transfer is way beyond that. Way beyond that. The very first thing that Adam and Eve lost, the very first thing that was taken away from them was land. And I'm telling you what's coming back. Kingdom land. The first thing that God promised to have restored was land. God, God told that to Abraham. And throughout history, it's go into all the world and take back. You see, the earth belongs to the Lord. It's a lie. The devil has lied to us and said, I own the land. The devil does not own the land. The devil is the God of the world system, not the God of the land. The land belongs to the Lord. End of story. The earth belongs to God and the fullness thereof. So all the gold, all the silver, all everything within it, all the oil belongs to God. Because it belongs to God. There's no, I'm not even going down that road to argue about it. Just get that book. And I want to show you what kingdom transfer is. Because God's about to release to me, to you. I know this for me. I know this. God is about to release to us the land. And I'm just like so, so, so excited. You know, when we were in South Africa, God said to me, when you get to the U.S., build yourself an altar. And I'm going to come and cut covenant on it. And I know the altar that I've got to build is going to be with 12 huge stones. Well, my brothers and sisters, we are so blessed. Someone pitched up, came to my home and gave us these 12 stones. And I know that I know that I know that this land is right now. It's in front of me. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to take my kingdom land. My kingdom land. And I'm going to take possession of this land, buy it, be given it, whatever. We're not going to squatter on it, 
We're going to get this land and we're going to build this altar. And God's going to come and cut covenant with us. And it's going to be so, so exciting. I'm like so excited. God, I firmly believe this for you. Each one of you, for you, Julia, for you, Mornay, for you, Sharon, I speak this over you. It's not just the house on someone else's property. It's the land under your feet. The Lord says, I'm, what, I'm going to give that to you. And I'm going to give you the land on the left, the right, behind you, and in front of you. God's going to increase your territory. But as you're faithful in the small things, get that book, Kingdom of God. You're going to be blessed. No jokes. What other one have I got? The nine-minute journal. Oh, my hat. Get that. Nine-minute journal. I share with you how to take nine minutes, nine, just nine minutes, and have a total, simple breakdown of nine minutes to receive a clear-cut word from God. Get on, jump on, and do this course with us. Because I'll share this. But let me give, let me give you the, the little bite on this one. Break your nine minutes up into three-minute sections. Three, three minutes, okay? So for the first three minutes, you're going to read, you're going to pray. Now, you're not praying for your president. You're not praying for your auntie and your uncle and your great grandchildren. And No, no, no. You're not. You're praying like this. Listen to this. Father God, come and touch me. Come, Lord God. Father, I know that your arm is not short. I know that you are speaking. Now, this is how I do it. I know that you are speaking all day, every day, all the time. Lord God, when you speak, you don't speak in riddles. You don't speak in vague ways. You speak clear. Father, the, the problem is my hearing. The problem is my seeing. The problem is my smell, my taste, my touch. That's, that's where the problem is, Lord. And I confess this. And now I ask you, Lord God, remove the wax from my ears. Remove the gunge out my nose. Remove the dirt and the dust out my eyes. Touch my taste buds. Touch my... Touch my nerve endings, Lord, so that I can feel. Father, I want to taste and see that you are good. And I pray like this for three minutes. Touch me, Lord God. Let your word come into me so it's, so it's clear. There's no blockages that I'm causing. Remove the things, Lord God, on me that are hindering the down load to me. That's how I pray for three minutes. Then I stop. Then I open the Bible. <clears throat> now, when you open your Bible and... And, and you, you, what you're doing is you're just going to read. The reading of the word renews the mind in Christ Jesus. Now, I'm not going to do a Bible study. I'm just open. And if you open and it says, and Judas hung himself, no. Go do likewise. That's not how you do it, okay? Just maybe open up to the book of Psalms or something and just read. Just read for three minutes. Let your, let your mind be renewed. And then... I get my pen, that's it, get my pen, and I get my journal, and I open it up and I sit. Mm. And the first thought that comes into my head, I write it down. And I know people are going to say, whoa, 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 that's dangerous. What happens if some other thinking comes in? My brothers and sisters, take every imagination, cast it down. I've asked God to speak to me. I'm in control of my thinking. I've asked God to speak to me. I've asked God to clear my thinking. I've read his word. I believe he's going to speak. Speak to me, God. Now, this is in my book. <laughs> this literally happened. I was back in South Africa. Literally happened. <clears throat> speak to me, God. Speak to me. I scream. Get thee behind me, Satan, I said. Speak to me, God. I scream. I went like... I refuse that thinking. That's like not where I'm going. I scream. Well, I, I literally got up. Literally, this happened. I got up and I went to my refrigerator, put my hands on the door of my refrigerator, and I said, I scream, stay. And <laughs> Jesus, no. you say, Mark, did you do I literally did that. Went back to my office, sat down, and I said, speak to me, God. I scream. I mean, oh, my Lord Jesus. So I wrote down with my pen, I-C-E, C-R-E-A-M. And the minute I put the M on the paper, I had another download. The Lord spoke to me. And you know what he said? Your heart is like ice. My word is like cream. Oh my gosh. I just, I started bawling. I'm, you know, well, that means crying. Tears started pouring down my face. And I'm like in 
full repentance mode and I'm saying, Lord God, forgive, forgive, forgive me, God, have mercy, have mercy. And suddenly I had more, bang, 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 and just the download came. My brothers and sisters, God's not going to speak to you in King James English. King James is dead. Be, be it that he was a good man in those days, near, he got the Bible done. But he's not going to speak to you like, Thus saith the Lord, I am the Lord your God. God's not going to speak to you like that. Okay? If you're from Pakistan, God's going to speak to you in your mother language. If you're from India, God's going to speak to you in your mother language. If you speak English, God's going to... If you speak American, God's not going to speak to you in British. Get it? God's going to speak to you where you are. Just write it down. I love you, love you, love you. Hey, bless you guys. Please contact me if you need prayer. Contact me if you want one of our books. Contact me if you want to jump on our course. Um, we're going to be doing another course called Prophetic Art coming up in the near future. We're looking at another one, uh, Daniel in the book of Revelation. In July, we're going to be doing the Decree and the Declare book. And where am I? In June, we're going to be doing a Holy Spirit baptism. And it's really something you don't want to miss. So I love you, love you, love you. We've got a jam-packed full year ahead of us. And I really pray this for you. That the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make His face shine upon you. The Lord cause His countenance to rise over you. And the Lord give you peace. God bless. Love you much.